Every year, politicians warn, if we want to guarantee America's food supply, we have to save the family farm. And to do that, they want your money. Lawmakers in Washington have passed a new farm bill. In 2008, Congress passed another $300 billion farm bill. We cannot turn back, not with an economy to fix and farms to save. Saving farms is what politicians promise that farm supports will do. Now, how old is this cat? It's a reason they do photo ops like this one. The president wouldn't talk to us about the farm bill. We contacted 69 members of Congress who voted for it, but couldn't get any of them to talk to us until finally Randy Cool of New York and Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas agreed to speak. Uh, family farms, small farms are important. And I don't think we want anybody in this country to starve. People would starve? They'd go out of business, then they'd be forced to move elsewhere and find different jobs. Well, that's not starving, that's finding a different job. But if they don't have a job, then they're going to starve. Well, they're doing pretty well in Nebraska. Corn farmer Mike Korth gets subsidies. He'll take the money, he says, but he's against the farm bill. It's a bad bill. In the end, if you take a bunch of money, it's like they, they grab the treasure chest, they open the door on it, and whoever can get the most out of it, you just run away with it. Nebraska farmers are running away with a lot of your money. Home prices may have been falling in most of America, but farmland prices have been rising. Here they've shot up 77% in four years. Farm subsidies rarely go to poor people. The average farmer makes twice what the average American earns. Yet Nebraska politicians want more. We need to get farmers a better safety net here. If you're a politician from Nebraska and you want to get elected, Republican or Democrat, the way to do that is to say, I support farm subsidies. Yes, that's a very important thing to our farmer is uh, subsidies. It would lose dramatic population if the subsidies weren't there at all. But despite the billions spent on subsidies, farm towns are smaller than ever. In Mike Korth's town, store after store is boarded up. It, it's pretty sad. The school at one time had just short of 1,000 kids in it. And now we don't have 300. It hasn't kept these small towns alive. Well, I think it has. I'm from a small town of 72 people. I am, and I'm going to tell you, farm subsidies have helped that town. After this interview, we researched his town. It was twice as big during the Depression. Population has dropped steadily ever since. But well, this isn't working. Well, I think it well, is, actually. More. You guys are on welfare. Uh, actually, it's not working. Actually, I disagree with that, because I think it is working. Actually, a government study found that the more farm aid a county got, the more likely it was to lose population. Why would that be? Because subsidies make it harder for smaller farmers to compete. Economist Walter Williams. The farm subsidies go to very, very wealthy farmers, not, not the ma and pa farm. It's these huge agribusinesses that get the big subsidies. Farmers like Maurice Wilder. He's been America's single biggest recipient of farm subsidies. He wouldn't let us take a picture of his jet, but here he is at one of his many homes. Wilder's estimated to be worth half a billion dollars, but he still gets your help making ends meet. Where is a limit where you say, you know what, you're big enough now, you can put your pants on by yourself? How do rich farmers legally get subsidies? The Farm Bill does say no payments to farmers who make more than one and a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah, and I can guarantee you, any one of them guys, they've got accountants that can hide that income. When you have a farm bill this size, this stretches almost two football fields. There are loopholes in here somewhere for a wealthy farmer to crawl through. I don't blame anybody from taking it when it's there and available. You're getting a handout. Well, they're getting, they're getting, um, you know, in, in a sense, it is a handout. This is not a handout. Take it, and if you lose it, fine, walk away. Not at all. It's not? No, it's not. Why isn't that a handout? I don't term it a handout. I term it an investment. But that's your money he's investing. And why? We don't need farm subsidies to have an ample food supply. I bet you didn't know that the growers of most crops don't get subsidies. Growers of apples, bananas, broccoli, cabbage, cantaloupe, carrots, cauliflower, grapes, lemons, limes, lettuce, and dozens of other crops get no subsidies. There's no cabbage crisis or pineapple panic. And yet, because big crops get subsidies, like rice and corn, food costs more. I'm not used to paying these prices. Another reason prices are high is that farmers get paid for not farming. You get a 
government payment on it is about $26,000. More than $20,000 a year for not farming his land. Real estate agents even use farm payments to sell homes to non-farmers. Agents didn't want to say that on television, so our producer posed as a home buyer and brought along a video camera. Do you have to farm it? Do you have to farm it to receive it? No, 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 no. no. It's just like a little bonus that you don't really have to do anything to get. All these homes get government payments, though nothing's farmed here. The owner of this home collected $7,000. Well, it's like offered to us. She isn't exactly sure why. <laughs> I, I think it's a weird uh, setup, but there's a lot of <laughs> weird setups. This is just a crazy system. It's left over from the 1930s, left over from the Depression, and it's a great example of how nothing is as permanent as a temporary government program. Of course, it is true that without subsidies, some bureaucrats would be out of work, and some farms would go out of business. But that's okay, say economists. It's part of the creative destruction that makes America strong. When there's progress, certain jobs are destroyed and certain jobs are created. The guy who delivered ice to my house, he doesn't have the job because we have refrigerators. We're better off. Now, the guy who lost his job selling ice, he probably got some other job. But we would have been held back if we had tried to save his job. But today in America, politicians are eager to spend your money to keep certain auto companies afloat. Loan guarantees that we've already passed for our auto industry. Certain banks in business. We must pass legislation to address this crisis. And to keep farms from closing. I think we might have to get two or three of these, don't you think? Yeah. There is one country that has abolished farm subsidies, New Zealand. There were riots and protests when they did that. Farmers said, we'll go bankrupt. People said, we'll starve, but it didn't happen. In fact, farm productivity quintupled. Agriculture there has boomed once they got people off the dole. Instead of sucking up to you politicians, they found ways to be more efficient as farmers. I don't have many farmers uh, sucking up. I do have them coming in and, and thanking me for allowing their family farm to survive. Clothing and shelter are important too. Why don't we subsidize them? If this works so well, why don't we just subsidize everything? Well, I would say to you that um, you don't want to push us. 